uh, ang ating pong title ng ating pag-usapan sa umaga nito is Living in Two Dimension at One Time. The Lord created human being as what? As a spirit with soul and body, not the other way around. We are a spirit being housed in this body, in, a, in humus or dirt, living here on earth. That's why the moment ang tao ay mamatay, he is illegal to stay on earth. Yung ba? He has to go to heaven or to hell. Okay? So, kinangalam mo na ang po natin bilang mananampalatay ni Kristo, ano itong klaseng dimension na kung saan tayo ay nabubuhay? This is the physical realm and the spirit realm. So the Lord desire to awaken His people to a new understanding about the realm of the Spirit. It brings for so long, ni-reveal na ito ni Lord sa Word of God. Pero hindi natin ito naintindihan at hindi natin na apply sa ating pamumuhay. In um, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, and sabi ron, for our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, is working for us as far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While do we not look at things which are sin, but at the things that are not sin? For the things which are sin are temporary, but the things which are not sin are eternal. So, sinasabi sa atin, Apostle Paul, the light or we should focus on the things or look at the things that are not seen because these are what? Eternal. And sinabi din ni Paul sa scripture sa Corinthians, uh, he differentiated the two kinds of Christian, the one that is carnal and that is spiritual. Okay? Being carnal Christian means we are ruled by our natural senses rather than the spirit of God. It doesn't necessarily mean that we are sinful or we are sinning. When Paul said you are a carnal Christian, it doesn't necessarily mean ikaw ay nabubuhay sa kasalanan. Ang ibig sabihin lang ng Panginoon that you are ruled by your natural senses, not your spiritual senses. We are simply allowing the natural or the sin realm or the physical realm to have more influence than the spiritual or the unseen realm. So if we are to overcome this, we must have our thinking right. Kinakailangan magkaroon ng paradigm shift o pagbabago ng ating isipan. So what is what is sin is temporary, while what is unseen is eternal. Yan ay ayon kay Apostle Paul. This is why it requires faith to operate and live with an awareness that we cannot that what we cannot physically see okay faith you cannot see faith it's just like uh, the wind you cannot see it but it's real it's there there is a real unseen world that actually influencing and even controlling the seen world no, 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 Originally, God gave man the rulership and the authority over the earth. But the problem is, when Adam and Eve surrendered this authority to the, to the devil, the devil became the god of this world. He became the ruler of this world, which is not the original purpose of God. It should be spirit with physical body should be the one ruling the earth. That's the very reason why Jesus came. Restore us back that authority. Back to us. But we have to enforce what he has done on the cross of Calvary so we can able to control the sin world. We accept this and tap this realm through the avenue of faith. It is only by faith that you can tap this unseen world. 
Second Corinthians 5, 6 to 7. Sabi ron, we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. And Paul recognized a dimension in the spirit that we cannot see naturally, yet it actually exists. This is the realm of the spirit. He was certain of its existence and our future there. Sigura disciple, that is where we belong. He also understood that we can function in this uncertain realm now. Because a lot of people thought that being born again is just going to heaven. No, it's about operating in the realm of the spirit. Because when Jesus are talking to Nicodemus, John 3.3 3 is not about going to heaven. John 3.3 3 is about operating in the realm of the spirit. Jesus is teaching Nicodemus how to operate in the unseen realm. Colossians 3, 1 and 2. If you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, referring to the realm of the spirit, where Christ is. Okay? And Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. And then Samya, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. So he's saying that you set your mind on things on the realm of the spirit where Christ is seated and not on the things on the earth. We are to be going after things in the spirit dimension even though we cannot see them. That is our work. This requires us to be spiritual, not carnal. Carnal means you are just operating in the sin world. So we must not be afraid of such thing. But realize that we are actually made for this as a new creation in Christ Jesus. That's how God created you. You are to operate in the realm of the spirit. That's why I always made this statement that the unbelievers are more spiritual than the believers of Jesus Christ. Bakit kanyo? Because they believe more in the realm of the spirit. Look at the palengke. Tingnan nyo. Ano ang cashback ng mga tindera sa palengke? Di ba inorola? Because they believe in swerte. Because that is, a real, that is something that is in the spirit. Bakit yung mga tindahan nila napakaraming, napakalalaking idol? Hindi naman simbahan, altar yung kanilang negosyo. But why they put an idol? Because they believe in the realm of the spirit. Bakit meron palakat ng gumagano? Di ba? That is, has some, that it has a spiritual connection. Kaya, I can conclude na mas spiritual, spiritual pa yung mga hindi naniniwala sa Diyos. Nakuha niyo po. And the good thing is we have access into this unseen realm through faith. An unbeliever, hindi sila dapat pumasok dyan. Why? Because the moment they enter into the realm of the spirit, their life is in danger. Why? In the realm of the spirit, there is a kingdom of darkness. Okay? And the moment you enter there and you, have the, you don't have the spirit of God, you are, your life is in danger. John 5, 19 to 20. Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do. For what he does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loved the Son and show him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater than this that you may marvel. Jesus saw into the unseen realm and directed his actions in agreement with that dimension. If we, are, if we want to live victoriously here on earth, we have to connect to this unseen realm. That's how Jesus operated when he was here on earth. He saw the unseen realm 
And every action that he did is always in agreement with that dimension. When his action on earth agree with the actions in the heavenly realm, then miracles occur. And Jesus' ability to function in this realm, it is not a gift. It is not a gift, mga kapatid. His ability was from an intimacy with the Father. Anong ibig ko sabihin? It was the Father loving the Son, Jesus Christ, that empowered Jesus to see the realm of the Spirit. It wasn't the love of the Son for the Father, but it is the love of the Father to the Son that causes Jesus to see the realm of the Spirit. In 1 John 4.19, sabi niya, we love Him because He first loved us. We do love Him, but only from our encounter with His love for us because by ourselves, we cannot love Him unless we first receive the very love of God. That's the only time we can ex uh, share this love to our God, the Father. And John 5.20 says, For the Father loved the Son and show Him all that He Himself is doing and greater works than this will He show Him so that you may marvel. So Jesus is revealing the key to his seeing into the unseen world. It is because of the Father loved the Son. The very reason we can see the realm of the Spirit is because of the love of the Father that is in us. Our experience with our seers here in Mindanao, nung hindi pa nila na-encounter yung love of the Father, Madalas, it is the kingdom of darkness ang nakikita nila. Then, when they encountered the love of the Father, the things na nakikita nila shifted from the kingdom of darkness, it's more on what? The kingdom of God and what God is doing. And we found out that the very key is what? The very love of God. Romans 5.5 5 says that the love of the Father was being poured out into our hearts. Kailangan lang po natin ano, i-receive yung love na ibinibigay sa atin ng Panginoon every day. Why every day? Because the love of God expires every day. Huh? Lamentation 3. His love is new every morning. It expires because every day, he has a dose of love that he wants to pour out into your hearts. That's the very reason why you need to receive it every day. It is the love of the Father that heals wounds. It is the love of the Father that frees us from condemnation. It is the love of the Father that breaks the power of shame and removes the effect of guilt. It is only by the love of God. All of this bug down our spirit man. It destroy our spirit man. And that is the work of the devil. He came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So that we cannot function in our true spirituality. The more we receive the love of the Father, the more our ability to live in two worlds at one time, ito po ang mangyayari sa atin. You can live in these two worlds simultaneously like Jesus living in this world. So seeing into the unseen dimension of the Spirit is not a result of the gift, a gift but an encounter with the love of the Father. The more we grow in intimacy, and love of the Father, the more we will see into the unseen realm. Kaya sabi ng iba, bakit di ko makita ang, ang realm of the Spirit? It's because God wants you to grow in love. And then the more you grow in love, 
the more you will seek the realm of the spirit. How do you how do you grow in the in the intimacy and love of the Father? You receive it because the love of God is not a concept. The love of God is not a theology. The love of God is a substance that being poured out into our hearts. And how are we going to have it? There's only one. You need to become a master receiver. If you want to master many things in this world, master this one. Be a master receiver because everything is a gift. According to James chapter 4, that everything, perfect gifts, comes from above. So everything na pwedeng danasin at matanggap ng tao, ang lahat na ito ay isang kaloob ng Diyos. So many people think of themselves as not being spiritual enough or gifted enough to function in these places. Kaya yung iba, nakukundem, bakit? Wala man ako makita. It's because he wants us to grow in intimacy. Because seeing in the realm of the Spirit is not a gift. Tandaan niyo po, hindi ang regalo. So when we were born again, something much more happened to us just getting to go to heaven when we die. When we were born again, we were empowered to interact with heaven, not in the future after we die, but now. Heaven and the spirit realm became accessible to us. That's why the word prayer is entering the presence of God. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, or 9 to 10, several on that you are seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. So every time you pray, mga kapatid, you are not praying here on earth or doon sa room ninyo. You are not praying there. Actually, you are being translated in heaven. The moment you close your eyes and you start to pray, you are not praying here on earth, but you are praying there in the realm of the Spirit. You are seated with Christ in the realm of the Spirit. Why? You are a citizen of heaven. And if you are a citizen of heaven, you have what? A passport in heaven. You can enter heaven anytime you want. Diba? If you are a Filipino citizen, you can enter, you can go wherever you want in the Philippines. Diba? But if you are a Filipino going to America, Nako, katakot-takot na pila ang gagawin mo. At pagpapatunay na ikaw ibabalik sa Pilipinas kapag pupunta ka sa Amerika dahil kung hindi, hindi ka nila bibigyan ng visa. Oh. So this means we are now able to discern and agree with the activity of the spirit dimension. John 3.13 no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. That is the son of man who is in heaven. Remember, when Jesus is telling this thing, speaking on this subject, he was on earth. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. That is the son of one man who is in heaven. Oh, but he's, he is on earth at that time. It means the Son of Man is functioning as a man in the earth. He ascended into heaven, came down from heaven, and is presently in heaven. Same true with us. Kaya sinabi ni Lord, you are seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. Even though we are physically here on earth, you are functioning in heaven. He was referring to a heavenly realm where all sorts of spiritual activity occurs. Kaya pag ito naunawa ng mga Kristiyano, hindi na sila tatamari mag-apo o manalangin, mag-pray. Because they understand what is happening in the realm of the Spirit. So being born again was being able to step into heavenly or the unseen realm. Diba? Unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
unless a man is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter. So he was seeking, when he's talking to Nicodemus, he was seeking to bring Nicodemus into the place of living in two dimensions at one time. That's why when you read the John 3.3, 3, it's not about going to heaven when we die. It's about how to operate in the realm of the spirit. Jesus wanted him to know that when his spirit man came alive as a mortal human being, he would no longer be limited to the natural realm or the physical realm. He can now operate in the realms of the spirit. Remember Elijah in 1 Kings 17, verse 1. And Elijah, test by of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be a dew nor rain this year except at my word. Elijah went to Ahab and he made the prophecy that there will be no rain. That is three and a half years, except at my word. Pero ati mapansin yung salita, before whom I stand. Hindi sinabi ni Elijah na before whom I stood or past tense. But it is a present tense. Sabi niya, before whom I stand. Why? In other words, it was not something that he had done in the past but rather was presently doing. Anong ibig sabihin? He was standing in two places at one time. In the natural, he was standing before Ahab. In the spirit realm, he was standing before the Lord God who lives. So, because of this truth, we can function from the spirit realm and change and alter things in the natural for God's will to be done. There are calamities, so like, like for example, the other day. We were in Cotabato, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And Wednesday, we made petitions in the courts of heaven regarding Maguindanao and Cotabato City. Then, Webes, ng morning, umalis kami, umuwi kami. You know what happened? Friday, umulan. Nagbaha. And then, we asked the seers there in Cotabato City what they saw. Ang sabi lang nila sa akin, there was a cleansing that is happening in the realm of the sea. There was a cleansing that is happening. The water that's flowing here is what? It's about the cleansing of the land. So as a New Testament born-again people, this can and should be our experience. We can stand before God and we can stand at the same time before men. John 14, 2 and 3. Ito yung madalas na uh, confusion sa scripture na ito. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a, pla prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. And where I am, there you may be also. So we have been taught that each of us will have a house in heaven that we will live in after we die. That is not the context of this verse. Jesus talks about Father's house. This is reference to where God lives. Tinan oh, nyo po sa where does God live? Saan ba nakatira ang Diyos? He lives in the spiritual or heavenly mansion. Kaya sabi ni Solomon in 1 Kings 8, 26-27 And now I pray, O God of Israel, let your word come through which have spoken to your servant David, my father. But will God indeed dwell on earth? Behold, heaven and the heavens of heavens cannot contain you, much less this temple which I have built. So God is dwelling 
and living in the spirit realm. Not heaven only, but the realm of the spirit. Because heaven of heavens cannot contain God because God is so big. So when Jesus refers to the Father's house, he is referring to a dimension in the unseen realm in which God dwells and functions. So in this realm, there are many mansions, sabi nung verse. Anong ibig sabihin ng word the mansion? The word mansion in Greek is mone. And it means a place to stay. It can also refer to the act of staying or the place being stayed in itself. So, Jesus is speaking of a dimension of the Spirit where we have access into it, presently have access into it. Ito yung mansion na binabanggit ng Panginoon. You have a dimension, a place in the Spirit that you can enter. It is not talking about a glorious house for us in a heaven after we die. That's not what Jesus meant. It is speaking of a place in the heavenly realm we presently can occupy and function from. And one of that place, I tell you, is about the is court of heaven. Because the court of heaven is not a method of prayer. Court of heaven is a real place or dimension in the realm of the spirit. Because the word mansion carries with it the idea that it is a place of residence. But in the Bible, you are seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. In other words, there is a place in the spirit where we have rights and where we belong. Why? You are a citizen of heaven. Kaya nga, one of the privileges of a citizen of heaven, you can convene the court anytime anywhere it becomes a place of residence for us in the spirit so god grant us places in the spirit from which we can function yun ang ibig sabihin niya then sinabi niya roon sa john 14 sabi niya jesus speak of preparing a place a place again traditionally it has been told to me that a place in heaven after we die. That's not what Jesus is telling us. Jesus also says that if this place is prepared, he will come again and receive us to himself. This is not about the second coming. That's why many believers were confused. Okay? It is speaking about a spiritual dimension available to us now. Prior to Jesus coming, only a handful of prophets had access into this spiritual dimension. However, the death of Jesus Christ changed everything. Nabago lahat. Acts 2, sabi ron. But this is what's spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, says the Lord, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. See? Everyone who got born again will experience to interact in this realm of the spirit. So God promised a prophetic abilities to everyone as a result of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And then the coming of the Holy Spirit. Jesus meant when he said, I will come and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Present tense, where I am, you may be also. Jesus is on earth at that time. He's speaking to his disciples. Where, sabi niya, where I am, you may be also. Even though Jesus is physically on earth, he is what? He is operating in the realm of the spirit. 
he wasn't talking about his second coming, but rather he's coming in and through the person of what? The Holy Spirit. John 14, 16 to 18. I will pray the Father that he will give you another helper. That he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be, will be in you. And then I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. So through the Holy Spirit, we're able to be with him where he is that is the promise so jesus work on the cross caused the veil between heaven and earth to be rent naalala niyo po doon sa march 27 50 to 51 when and when jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit he died then behold the veil of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom and the earthquake and the rocks were split. Ibig sabihin ng Panginoon, He opened the gate. The heavy, thick veil in the temple that kept everyone away from the glory and the presence of God, except one man, one a year, once a year, was ripped open. During the time, isa lang pwede pumasok. High priest lang, once a year. And when Jesus died, he's saying that every one of us, because of his death, we can now enter the very presence of God. That's why he made us priests. Peter chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, that you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Because in the Old Testament, without a priest, you cannot offer a sacrifice. You cannot come to God without a priest besides you. Now today, the reason why we can now enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise because the Lord made us a priest. We can enter into the realm of the spirit. Second Corinthians 12, 1 and 4. It is doubtless that profitable for me to boast. I will, I will come to vision and revelation of the Lord. I know a man in Christ of 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body, I do not know. God knows such one was caught up to the third heaven. Here, Paul is sharing that he was. I know a man. He's referring to himself. He was brought by God in heaven, in the third heaven. I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. Sabi niya, yung kunyun ba ay... Physically, I was there, or in the spirit, I was there. Something I don't know. How he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Hmm. During the time, hindi niya kwenento kung sino yon. Ang sabi lang, I know a man, but he is referring to himself. Acts 2, 32 to 33. This Jesus God has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, He poured out this which you now see and hear. So, first, what Jesus had done on the cross was the legal mandate that was now met. Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. God the Father, full, through the Lord Jesus Christ, fulfilled the requirements of the law. The law requires that a man should die. There should be shedding of the blood. So the legal requirements of the law was fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ. And the powers of darkness, legal right, were revoked and removed because of what Jesus had done. Second, otherwise the Holy Spirit or the promise of the Father would not arrive without the blood of Jesus shedding on the cross. Second, Jesus had clearly reached the throne of God because he's now pouring out the Holy Spirit on them. How do we know that when Jesus rose from the dead and ascended to heaven, he was in heaven? 
Because in Acts chapter 2, what happens? The Spirit of the Lord was sent to the people. They spoke in, in tongues. They made miracles, signs and wonders. Even today, it's happening. Sabi ng mga scientists, if Jesus traveled, ascended to heaven by speed of light, ang sabi ng mga scientists, hanggang ngayon daw, si Jesus ay nagtatravel pa din. Third, the Holy Spirit was now upon this disciple to legally empower them to execute into place everything Jesus had died for. Sabi niya, He came to give light and make it more abundantly. And we, as His disciples, we are legally empowered to execute everything that Jesus died for. Healing, sick, uh, the, yung healing, yung prosperity was given to us. Now, Sandali lang po. Look what happened. This was yesterday. This is the stamping in Korea. Ang sabi ng balita ngayong umaga, there are around 146 people died in Korea. Stamping in a Halloween party. Look at this. What is the explanation of all these things? Like what I'm saying, there are spiritual realm and the physical realm. And when people operate in witchcraft, tandaan niyo po, Halloween, it's a, it's a witchcraft, it's a form of witchcraft. You're opening the gate in the realm of the spirit and inviting this spirit. That's why, oh, ngayon, mag-Halloween. Dati hindi naman ito sinaselebrate ng Pilipinas eh. Pero ngayon, look at the mall. They're ce celebrating this kind of thing. This is a demonic thing and they are creating a gates, a, a portal for this spirit to enter. That's why never make a, you know, uh, di ba nagde-decorate pa yan, yung mga bata, sinusuotan pa nila nung mga nakakatakot ng mga mukha or mga costume, di ba? And they do a Trick or treat, di ba? Naghihingi ng mga candy or chocolate sa mga bahay-bahay. Kinopi lang naman natin niya sa Western culture. Eh. Di ba? But that is a demonic practice, mga kapatid. Look at what happened to South Korea yesterday. The only explanation is they open up the gate. And that's why these demonic forces enter and causes people to die. So if you are to access this heavenly dimension, it will take a developing of the prophetic abilities. You need to have these abilities developed. Hebrews 5.14 Sabiron, but solid food belongs to those who are full of age. That is, those by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. God, is, Paul is talking about not the physical senses. He is talking about the spiritual senses na kailangan natin. This belongs to what? To those who are mature, full of age. So it is talking of the ability to prophetically discern. Just like we have five natural senses, we also have prophetic abilities or 
spiritual senses. These prophetic abilities give us the strength to function in this spiritual realm that we have been called to and made for. Whether you like it or not, you are being called to and made for to operate in the spiritual realm. It is not an option. Just like our five natural senses empower us to function in the natural realm, these prophetic abilities attached to our new nature we receive when we got born again. This is part of what you have received. That's why the Bible says, unless a man be born again, he cannot see. It's about seeing. Diba? Being born again again, being born again was about functioning in heaven now. Why? Because you are seated with Christ in the realm of the spirit. If you are blind and can't see, you are considered disadvantaged and handicapped. O, oh, di ba, tawag natin ay PWD, person with disabilities. So, if you are born again, and you are not operating in the realm of the spirit because you, you are blind, you cannot see, you cannot hear, anong tawag sa'yo? You are what? Disabled. The loss or interruption of any of these senses make it more difficult to function in the natural realm. Di ba? Subukan mo hindi ka makalakad. Hindi ka makakita. Oh. It is very difficult to function normally in this physical realm. Oh, how much more in the spirit? That's why being tossed around by the devil. Because sabi ng mga jablo, wala namang makita ang mga yan. Hindi naman tayo nakikita ng mga yan. It is also true of the spirit dimension. The lack of any of them can result in us being handicapped in our movement and perception in that dimension we have been granted access into. You have given an access in the realm of the spirit. Pero wala ka man makita, wala kang marinig, wala kang maamoy. Wala kang maramdaman. Paano ka na? See? Remember, it is through the reason of use that these senses are developed. Nakuha niyo po. Your spiritual senses can only be developed when you use it. This means we learn to use them by using them. This requires a step of faith as we endeavor to function in the unseen realm. May faith ka naman. Ba't di mo gamitin? This can be scary at the start. Why? Can you imagine when the disciples saw Jesus walking on the water? Anong unang reaksyon nila? Ay, multo! O, di ba? At nung sinabi ng Panginoon, ay, it is I. O, sabi ni Peter, Lord, cause me to walk into the waters. Anong sabi ni Lord? Come. And Peter was the first man walking on the water. Now, what are these senses? I'll share you five spiritual senses na kailangan natin i-practice. Kasi the only way na ito ay <laughs> madidevelop when we use it. So if you don't use it, it will not be, it will not develop. The number one is we call it the spiritual side. 1 John 47 to 51. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? And sabi ni Lord, you will see 
greater things than this. And he said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. See, there is a gate of heaven. What happened to South Korea is what? They opened up the gate of hell. See what happened? Many died. Jesus, through his sight in the spirit, he saw Nathaniel under the fig tree. Diba? And this astonished Nathaniel. And he wasn't used to that supernatural realm. That's why anong response niya? He worshiped God. Nathaniel declared Jesus to be the son of God. Kasi wala namang propetang at the time na nakagagawa noon. Di ba? Because Jesus is operating in the realm of the spirit. He can see. Di ba? Our life, our purpose, and our reason for being alive on this planet are actually hidden in Christ with God. It is hidden. Nakatago yan sa Diyos. Naandun yan. That's why we have a book of destiny. And the more Jesus, the Christ, appears and becomes manifest, the more our life is revealed as well. That's why I don't sabi ni Lord, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Ang pag-asa para mahayag kung sino tayo. So our purpose for being here is understood. Ngayon, unti-unti mong maintindihan bakit ka narito sa lupa, bakit ka pinanglak sa pamilya na ito, bakit ka andito sa lugar na ito. Matthew 5.8 Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. So the very purpose of God for all of us is to see God not when we die, but now when we get born again. Diba? Seeing God is not a reference to heaven and afterlife. Tandaan niyo po yan. Seeing God is speaking of the ability to perceive in the spirit realm presently. Ngayon. Nakuha niyo po. To perceive the realm of the spirit today. The word see is the Greek word optanomai and it means with eyes wide open beholding something remarkable. So yan yung gusto ni Lord na mangyari. We can see the physical realm at the same time we can see the spiritual realm simultaneously. When we have a pure heart, a promise ni Lord is we were able to see because there is nothing clouding our spiritual vision. We behold the beauty and the glory of who Jesus is. So how can you worship God if you cannot see Him? Diba? That's why God will open your spiritual eyes so that you can worship Him and see the beauty of the Lord. We see with eyes wide open and stand amazed at Him. Diba? Last week we talked about the desires of your heart. Sabi niya, delight yourself. You know the word delight? It's a romantic term. It's about being amazed. Being awestruck. And how can you be awestruck? Kung bulag ka. Diba? Pag may artista, diba? Sumisigo. Ah! Sumisigo pa yung mga, mga tao pag nakikita nila yung artista nila. Why they are shouting? It's because they were all struck. Nakikita nila eh. Yung beauty ng tao, yung karisma ng tao, nakikita nila. That's why they were amazed. So how can you worship God if you cannot see Him? That's why God wants your eyes to be open. There was an example of a child that he can see an angel. He can talk the to an angel. And the daddy or the father asked him, ah, hindi, nakikita nung tatay niya yung nakikita niya. And then, the child 
asked the angel, Why can my dad not see you? Alam mo sagot ng angel? He says, You cannot see him because your eyes have beheld too much evil. Wow. Bigat to na. Eh, ang mga bata, dahil wala pa silang nakikitang maraming masama. That's why their eyes are open. They can easily see the realm of the spirit. Eh, tayong matatanda na. Di ba? We have witnessed and saw too much evil in this world. That's why God has to cleanse our spiritual eyes. Next, spiritual hearing. Acts 8, 26-27. And the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, spoke and Philip heard. And now the, an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, say, Arise and go toward the south along the road which goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he rose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship. See, as he obeyed, Philip, as he obeyed the angel of the Lord, he obeyed the word he heard, and he went into the desert. And he encountered this Ethiopian in a chariot. And the spirit then spoke to him as this Ethiopian eunuch was passing by. In, the, in, eight, in Acts chapter 8, verse 29, and Sabiron, Then the spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake his chariots. See? Philip heard at this time, it's not the angel anymore. It is now the spirit of God. Napasin nyo? The first one who gave him the message it was the angel to go to the desert and encounter this Ethiopian who is going to Jerusalem to worship. And then when he saw this chariot, his chariots, ang sabi ng spirit is what? Go near and overtake these chariots. See? It is not the angel anymore. It is now the spirit of God. So the result was this Ethiopian was born again, baptized, and history tells us had great influence for the kingdom in that palaces of Candace. So this all happened because Philip had the ability to hear in the spirit realm. Imagine kung wala siyang ability to hear. Di ba? Hindi niya narinig yun. Na-miss niya yung opportunity na ma-share ang word of God dito sa Ethiopian eunuch na ito. Next, pangatlo, spiritual touch and feel. How do we touch and feel in the spirit? Touching or feeling is another sense that we can use to navigate the dimension of the spirit realm. Madalas ito ang ginagamit sa atin. It is common. Kaso lang hindi natin alam na yun na ang Diyos na ang nagsasalita sa atin. In the Old Testament, yung mga pare, nagsusuot sila doon sa kanilang breastplate, may dalawang bato. They call it Urim and Tumim. Two stones na nakalagay sa dibdib. Exodus 28.30 And you shall put into the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Tumim. And they shall be over Aaron's heart when he goes before the Lord. So Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel over his heart before the Lord continually. So the stone, this is stone that is in the breastplate of a priest. They call it Urim and Tumim. It represents how the Lord spoke to the priest about the judgment of God over the tribe of Israel. In that Urim and Tumim, where over the heart, it is speak of the heart or the spirit being influenced by it. In other words, we can feel in our hearts the desire, the passion, the intent, and the direction of the Lord. Most of the time, mga kapatid, ganitong paraan nangungusap sa karamihang mga Kristiyan. Kaya sabi ng iba, Ay, hindi ko man narinig ang tinig ng Diyos. Yes, through touch and feel, nagsasalita sa iyo ang Panginoon. 
Numbers 27, 21. He shall stand before Eliezer the priest who shall inquire of the Lord for him by the judgment of the Urim. At his word, they shall go out and at his word, they shall come in. He shall, he and all the children of Israel with him, all the congregations. See, that's part of the uh, yung damit ng priest every time he entered. The, the tabernacle, the Holy of Holies. First Samuel 28, verse 6. And God rejected Saul. At ito ang sabi ng Panginoon kay Saul. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him either by dream or by urim or by the prophets. The urim represent the touch and the feel that is coming from the heart of a person. This was clearly one of the ways God spoke and directed his people through touch and feel. Through the realm of touch and feel, the desire of the Lord could be discerned. Uh, a pastor asked me, sabi niya, Pastor, I cannot hear the voice of God. How can I know that that is the will of God for my life? And then I asked him a question. Sabi ko, nung ikaw ay nag-asawa, believer ka na. Sabi niya, yes. Tanong, yan bang napangasawa mo ay kalooban ni Lord John? Sabay react, oh naman. O, tanong ko sa'yo, paano mo nalaman? Narinig mo ba ang tinig ng Diyos? Sabi niya, hindi. O, paano mo nalaman na that is the will of God? Sabi niya, I cannot explain, but deep inside my heart, I know that she is the will of God for my life. See, that is spiritual touch and feel. Philippians 4, 7, The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Anong ibig sabihin? Nung peace of God. The Bible says, this peace will guard our hearts and mind. This word guard in Greek word means pororio. It means to be a watcher in advance. It means to mount a guard and to post a spy at the gate. So di ba yung mga gates, may tower yon, At sa tower, merong ano, nagbabantay. Para malayo pa lang yung kalaban, may magwa-warning na. And that, it means by peace. The word peace. It means to mount a guard or to post spies at the gate. Colossians 3.15 Let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you are also were called in one body and be thankful. So the word rule in the Greek means brabeo it means to govern. So in other words, we are allowed the peace of God to govern our decisions and lives. If you're going to make a decision, start with spiritual touch and feel. Do you have peace? Pag wala kang peace, most likely it's not from God. Or it's not the timing of God. We must give the peace of God, the governing realm, in and over our lives. So if we will walk in such a way with an awareness of the presence or the absence of God peace, we will be able to navigate the unseen realm and its effect on the natural realm. Kaya, to know or to navigate the realm of the spirit Isa sa mga ginagamit ni Lord ang yung spiritual touch shield. And that is what? The peace of God. Acts 15.25 Di ba nagkaroon sila ng prayer at ang sabi ng Holy Spirit send Paul and Barnabas. And ang sabi ng sa verse 25 it seemed good to us being assembled with being assembled with one accord to send chosen men to you with our Barnabas, with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. 
you know, the words seem good to us could imply they had peace and it seemed right in the spirit to send this man to them. So when they sent a missionary, they gathered together and they seek the Lord. And one way to know that that is the siguro during the group in a prophesy, oh, we will send, the Lord said that we're going to send Paul and Barnabas. And the rest of the or the elders are said, it seemed good to us. Anong ibig sabihin? They have peace in their heart. They can feel. They allow the peace of God to, to direct their decisions. And it was necessary in leading these New Testament churches. Even today, we don't decide based on what? On knowledge. We base on what the Spirit is telling us. We must learn to live under the constraint of the Spirit and we need to be led by the peace of God. This is the whole feeling and touching sense in the unseen realm of the Spirit. When you talk about spiritual touch and feel, it is talking about the peace of God that guards your heart. Next, spiritual smell. I can smell easily the presence of demons. Even unbeliever pa ako, mag, naaamoy ko na yung presence ng demons. Now, another sense that helps us function in the unseen dimension of the spirit is the unseen, is the sense of smell. Remember Song of Solomon 3 verse 6 tells us the bridegroom coming toward us carries a fragrance. Anong sabi ron ng Nang Solomon 3.6, sabi niya. Song of Solomon. Who is this coming out of the wilderness like the pillars of smoke? Perfume with myrrh and frankincense with all the merchants' fragrant powders. Remember, Song of Solomon is a romantic uh, uh, writings. It's about the relationship of Christ and the bride of Christ, who is us, the believers. And Jesus is smelling us with what? Perfume with myrrh and frankincense with all the merchant fragrance powders. See? Parang kulang na lang, ipinaligo mo yung fragrance na yun. That's why every time you walk in the realm of the spirit, God can smell your fragrance. Alam niyo ba yun? The Lord and His glory comes with an aroma. Tandaan niyo. And the fragrance that we can detect when we are sensitive. Maraming mga pagkakataon. Last uh, two weeks ago, we were in Dinagat province. We made a petition before the courts of heaven. And almost everybody smelled the fragrance presence of God. They smell a different... Sabi niya, kakaibang amoy ito. Ngayon ko lang na naamoy itong amoy na ito. Sabi ng isa, the moment na sinindihan namin yung, ano, yung minora, and is, she start to smell the very presence of God. Many times we encounter that smell. Ako naamoy ko yung the smell of the rose of Sharon. Ano yung rose? Yung rose, pag inamoy mo, hindi mo maamoy yung fragrance niya maliban na durugin mo yung petal at kunin mo yung katas. That's the only time you can smell that pr- the fragrance of the rose. So awaken this dimension of sensitivity to detect the glory of who we are and the aroma of His glory in us. Ina-awaken ito nilo itong dimension of sensitivity na ito sa atin. That we can smell the presence of God. John 12.3, remember that? When Mary took a pound of very costly oil of his, his spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, what happens? And wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Smelling a fragrance from heaven can be the result of an anointing coming into the room from heaven. That's why there are times when you are worshiping the Lord, 
something happens, you can smell the fragrance of heaven. Philippians 4.18 Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaproditus the things sent from you. See? A sweet smelling aroma. An acceptable sacrifice well pleasing to God. Because every time in the Old Testament they sacrifice an animal, there is a fragrance na naamoy. Parang subukan mo mag-barbecue. Diba? There is a fragrance. Diba? Naamoy ka na. Amoy barbecue. Diba? Sa Panginoon, it's what? A smelling aroma. That's why when we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, there is a fragrance coming out from us. And the devil can smell that fragrance. That's why he can run away from us. There can be offerings released that can create fragrances in the spirit realm that can be smelled in the natural. That's why the devil doesn't want you to give your tithes and offerings. Alam yung bakit? Because every time we give our tithes and offerings, that is a form of sacrifice. And there is always a smelling aroma being released in the realm of the spirit. Our offerings can actually release, release a sweet smelling aroma that can be smelled naturally if you are sensitive to it. Every time. And most of the time, the devil can smell it. Kung kahit di nyo maamoy, the devil can smell it. That's why he always hindered your offering. When we smell something in the spirit, it can be a sign of what is occurring in that dimension. We should seek to develop these senses and be aware of that which is happening in the unseen realm. That's what we need to do. We need to be aware of what is happening. So the Bible also says, we as believers carry an aroma in the spirit. Remember Noah? When Noah built an altar and offered sacrifice, and the Lord smelled the sweet smelling aroma, it is not the smell of the, the, the animal sacrifice. It was the, the aroma of his heart. That's why because Noah built an altar and offered a sacrifice to the Lord, the Lord smelled the aroma of Noah and because of that, he made a one-sided covenant. Sabi niya, hindi ko nang hugunawin ang mundo. 2 Corinthians 2, 15-16 shows that in the spirit dimension, our lives are carrying an aroma. O, oh, tinan niyo. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one, we are the aroma of death leading to death and to the other, the aroma of life leading to life and who is sufficient for these things. See? We are releasing in the spiritual dimension, we are releasing a fragrance of Christ. That's why your presence alone, it attracts people. To come before the Lord because of the fragrance that you are releasing in the realm of the Spirit. We are to be carrying the fragrance of the Lord among the lost and the saved. You have that. Whether we smell it naturally or not, or not, it would seem our lives emit an aroma in the spiritual word that is being smelled. Hindi lang ng mga nasa kingdom of dark, of the, nasa kingdom of light, but also in the kingdom of darkness. Uh, one of the revelation that uh, shared to us by Prophet Neville Johnson, sabi niya, our thought thou is exposed in the realm of the spirit. Ibig sabihin, in the spiritual realm, our thoughts has a sound. 
It has a certain frequency. And it has a smell. And it has color. Even though the devil cannot read our mind, but what is in our thoughts that we are entertaining, it is exposed in the realm of the spirit as a light or darkness. Sabi ng Book of Luke. At ang sabi ng Prophet Neville Johnson, one of the uh, aroma na has a very bad smell in the realm of the spirit, alam niyo kung ano? Self-pity. Every time a person will come to this point of self-pity, the devil can smell. Eh, nasubukan niyo mag-self-pity, makakarinig kayo ng tinig, magpakamatay ka na, tumalong ka na sa tulay. Bakit? Because he can easily recognize your thoughts in the realm of the spirit. Kaya diba sabi ni Lord, mag-isip ka lang ng malaswa, nagkasala ka na. That's how powerful our thought life is. Oh. The devil can smell even our thought life. Akala niyo wala nakakaalam? They can know. It has a smell. It is speaking of the life and the glory of the Lord over our lives. That fragrance is the life and the glory of the Lord. That's why sabi niya, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Remember Esther? Esther carried as she was prepared to come before the king. Nagkaroon po ng beauty pageant at the time sa panahon ni parang Miss Universe. Naghanap ng hari ng bagong reyna. And she had been anointed with oils and fragrances in preparation for her coming before the king. Oh, nagbabad siya. Look at Esther 2.12. It's young women's turn came to the to go into to king as a seros, sorus, after she had completed 12 months preparation. Can you imagine 12 months? According to the regulation for the women who thus were the days of their preparation, a portion, six months with oil of meal and six months with perfumes and preparation for beautifying women. Naliligo ito sa gatas at sa pabango. Can you imagine that? So the fragrance of this woman, the purpose of that would reach the king before their actual presence. So they had been perfumed. They had been so perfumed that they carried an aroma designed to impress the king and choose them to be chosen. Para mapili sila. Okay? So, same true with us. The Holy Spirit will anoint us with sweet perfumes that will cause the king to desire us. We may carry the aroma of heaven in the spirit world that causes us to be desired by the king himself. Leviticus 21.18 tells us that among other things, if a man had a deformity in his nose, he could not function as a priest. Oh, alam niyo ba yun? Bawal sa priest ang hindi nakakaamoy. Oh. Because smelling is speak of discerning in the spirit room. 1 Corinthians 12 can speak of the discerning of spirit. So the spiritual smell, it means discerning in the spirit, not suspicion. This is the ability to recognize the presence of angels or demons and other spiritual forces seeking to influence a situation. Hebrews 5.14 oh, But solid food belongs to those who are full of age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So the word discern in Greek is diakrisis. It means judicial estimation. To discern is what? A judicial estimation. It means when we discern, we are making decisions like a judge would do. 
So we are evaluating that which is being presented to us through the senses of the spirit and making decision concerning it. That's why a judge will always decide on the merit of what? The evidences that was presented in the court. But the, if the evidences are not presented in the court, kahit patutuo yan, hindi siya magde-decide based on that. Kaya there are evidences that are not inadmissible to the court. Even do totoo, baka nakuha sa maling paraan. So we discern both, both good and evil. We can determine the heavenly realm operation and the operation of the evil realm. Like for example, itong mga bahang nangyari. We need to discern, is there any evil behind this? What God is saying on this thing that is happening. When it is heavenly dimension, we come into agreement. With our faith and action. But when it is in the evil realm, we undo it, we revoke it, we resent it. It's legal right. We revoke its legal right to have operation in the natural realm. That's why you need to go to the courts of heaven and revoke through the judge. You make a petition para revoke yung legal right ng enemy. Matthew 16:18. Kasi nabi niya, I also say to you, that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my ecclesia. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. For the spirit realm to have entrance into the natural, there must be a gate that comes into agreement with it. Oh, bakit maraming namatay sa South Korea? When they practice witchcraft through Halloween, it created and it opens a gate and causes the demons to enter that particular area. And this gate can be a person, can be an organization, or anything that allows the spirit realm access through it. Oh. These are the things in the natural that allow satanic influence to come through them into the sin realm. Tandaan niyo po, ang mga nasa spirit realm, whether they are for the kingdom of God and the king, kingdom of darkness, cannot enter the earth without a gate or a portal. And a portal is an altar. That's why when people celebrate Halloween, it becomes an altar. It is a gate for this spirit to enter. These are the things in the natural that allow satanic influence to come through them into the sin realm. It is the job of the church or the ecclesia to shut or to close these gates through revoking their legal right to operate. And the only way you can revoke it is you go to the court. If you will not go to the court, the judge cannot issue a judgment. You cannot just shout. Example, people who have gained a realm of influence allow the will of hell to be done in the earth. Oh, may mga altar din sila, may mga offering din sila. These people might either need to be converted or removed from their place of influence. Oh. Baka yung mayor nyo, yung ginagamit na gate para yung mga uh, gates of hell ay mag-operate sa lugar nyo. So you go to the court para mapaulang visa ang kanyang authority. They are a gate being used by the satanic spirit realm to bring its influence into the earth. Laging may gagamitin si satanas na tao or organisasyon or asosasyon. No, 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 ano po. Without a human being, he cannot enter the earth. This can be true of organization, agency, and other groups. Kaya marami mga cult religions. These gates have the right to operate because someone in the natural granted them legal access to come in. Sa ating mga territories, oh, every territory has thrones. They have altars. They have gates. And there are spirit ruling in that place. So our job as the ecclesia of the Lord is to what? enforce the kingdom of God. 
and we are called to evict the squatter that is in our territories. Nakuha niyo po? And the only way you can do that is in the divine council or in the courts of heaven. On the other hand, there are gates of righteousness that allow God's will and influence to be done on the earth. Genesis 28:17. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? Remember, Abraham went to Bethel and built an altar. And when the altar was built, built in Bethel, the heavens opened. Lumipas ang maraming taon, yung apo niya ni si Jacob na padaan doon sa Bethel. And he saw the altar is open or the gates in heaven is open. At ang sabi niya, this is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. John 5.19 Sabi niya, most, most assuredly I say to you, the Son of Man can do nothing of himself but what he see the Father do for whatever he does, the Son does in like manner. Miracles entering the earth realm from heaven were a result of heaven and earth coming into agreement. Not, no miracles will take place on earth without us opening the gates. So when Jesus saw what was happening in heaven, he became a gate for this miracle to enter the earth. That's why every time you saw a miracle, the Father is there. Because it is the Father who made that miracles. Jesus became a gate. As a gate, he simply did in earth what he saw happening in heaven. And the result was miracles. Jesus as a gate in the natural gave heaven the legal right to enter the earth by agreeing with it. That's why sabi ni Lord, this is the way you pray. Matthew 6, 10. Come thy kingdom. Be done your will on earth as it is in heaven. That's why every time we pray, we are giving God a legal right to operate here on earth. Oh. Kaya kung hindi tayo magmanalangin o magampo o magpray, God cannot operate and you cannot just say, bahala ka na Lord. No, God will not do it. Why? The authority was given to man. And he inhibited himself from inter, interfer, uh, in, uh, from makialam, interfering in the affairs of men. Di siya makikialam. Unless man give him the legal right. That is what we call the law of dominion. Now, the last one. Spiritual taste. Wow. Sabi ng Bible, 1 Peter 2, 1, 2, 3. Therefore, laying aside all bodies, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Diba sabi sa Psalm, taste and come, taste and see that the Lord is good. When we eat of the sweetness and the graciousness of the Lord, we grow and mature in the Lord. Like durian. Kahit on explain ko sa inyo ng durian, kahit pasabihin kong durian tastes like hell, but tastes like heaven, but until you taste it, you will never appreciate it. Diba? So we need to consistently be eating from His sweetness. Revelation 10, 18, 10, 8 to 11. Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which stand on the sea and on the earth. So I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. <laughs> little book, how the angel. Huh? And he said to me, Take it and take and eat it. Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and it was sweet as honey in my mouth.
So revelation, then, but when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. And he said to me, you must prophesy again but many, about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. You know, when he tastes it by his mouth, it is sweet. But when the book is eaten, in their stomach, it becomes bitter. Why? A bitter stomach can cause one to vomit or spew out of the mouth. And the very purpose, kaya siya pinakain yon, para he can able to prophesy to the nations of the world. The word of God. Amos 3.8, a lion has roared, roared. A lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord has spoken. Who can but prophesy? So when there is a stirring in our spirit, it can be relieved except we prophesy that word. When there is a bitterness in our stomach, the only thing you can do, para mawala yan, sumuka ka. Diba? When there is a stirring in the spirit, you prophesy. Okay? This is what it means when the sweet word we have tasted become bitter in the stomach. Out of our innermost being, we release the word of the Lord. Bakit tayo pa? Kasi hindi pwedeng si Lord ang mag-prophesy. Kasi wala siyang authority dito sa lupa. Tayo ang may authority dito sa lupa, kaya tayo ang ginagamit ni Lord. He will give you the book. The book. I mean, sabi niya, kainin mo. And then you prophesy later. Tasting the goodness of the Lord also speak of us receiving revelation and enlightenment. When you receive the revelation and enlightenment, you taste the goodness of the Lord. 1 Samuel 14, 27 records that occasion when Jonathan, the son of Saul, puts forth his rod and begins to eat honey from the ground. Kasi nagkaroon ng, ng parang uh, law si Samuel na huwag kumain ng honey. But when, when Jonathan ate that honey, what happened? The result was his eyes. His eyes were enlightened. Kinan niyo po. But Jonathan had not heard his father charge the people with the oath. Therefore, he stretched out the end of the rod that was in his hand and dipped it in a honeycomb and put his hand to his mouth and his countenance brightened. Ibig sabihin, when Jonathan was not aware of Saul's legalistic requirement not to eat that hand or partook this honey. What happens to him, it did like the enlightenment, bumukas yung kanyang spiritual eyes, came upon him. So in other words, Jonathan was not under the religious restriction of his father. Therefore, he was free to partake of the goodness of the Lord. The result was a spirit of revelation came to him. So when we eat of the goodness of the Lord and taste of his graciousness, there is what? Unlocking of the revelation that we can receive. It is because we have been freed by his goodness and his kindness. So don't be put in bondage again to legalism and religious constraint. We are free. To taste and see that the Lord is good. Conclusion. We have spiritual eyes. We have spiritual seeing. Spiritual hearing. A spiritual touch. And we have spiritual smell. And a spiritual taste. These are the five senses in the spirit realm. That help us maneuver the spiritual dimension. So we can get into prayer. We need it. When we pray, we need our eyes to be open. We need our ears to be open. Diba? And our nose or spiritual smell to be functioning. And the more we use them, the more we develop in them. So that's the key. So the operation in the spirit realm will progressively mature. Pag mature ka. Amen? So, 
thank you and God bless. Tayo po ngayon ay manalangin and let us allow the Holy Spirit to move through us right now in our midst today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, today we ask you, as we enter your gates with thanksgiving, and we enter your courts with praise, Lord, we ask you that open our spiritual senses and cause us to experience the goodness of God. Lord, forgive us of our generational sin. Forgive us for the sin of our forefathers and we confess this sin. Cleanse us, Father, so that we can see more of you. And Lord, today, we ask you that you fill our hearts with that love. Love from the Father that causes us, our spiritual eyes, to see you more. Thank you so much, Lord, sa ginagawa mo sa buhay namin. You are preparing the body for these last days. We thank you. We bless you. We ask you to bless our uh, brethren that is na nasa Zoom, na rin din po sa nasa Facebook. Pagpalaan niyo po bawat isa sa kanila. Today, let them receive the very love of the Father. Because your promise, your love will be new every morning. Make us a master receiver, Father God, to receive this love so that we can practice operating in this, in the realm of the Spirit, using our spiritual senses. Salamat po, Panginoon. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Doon po tayo sa ating pong mga communion elements. Now, let us now get our communion elements. Tayo po ay uh, manalangin. At let us now remember the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. For I receive of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he got given thanks, he broke it. And said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us now partake the bread that represents the blood of Jesus. The body of Jesus, I mean. In like manner, he also took the cup. After supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord death until he comes. Let us not partake in the juice. Father, today I just release healing to each one of us today. Those who are sick right now, I just re release healing in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we partake this communion, it represents your blood and your body, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us today. We receive this, the benefit of the cross. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let us now prepare for our offering. Lord, today, as we bring our offering before you, make this offering as a sweet-smelling aroma. Thank you so much for blessing us this week that we can now experience of that we can now bring this offering because you are Jehovah Jireh. Kayo po nagpo-provide sa amin ng pang-sacrifice. Weekly, Lord, you are providing us the blessing so that we can bring a sacrifice before you. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for blessing us. Happens. That's because we tend to think of it as a single transaction. We give, they get. The end. But what if there is more to the story? What if God is doing more than we know with our gift? Good news. He is. When we give, we are doing more than we know. Because God does more than we could imagine in three key ways. God works through us. We become a pipeline through which His blessings flow. Instead of holding tightly to what He has given us, we must let it overflow into the needy world around us, allowing God's glory to shine. God works with us. We become partners in His mission to renew and restore all things to Himself. Through our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness, we join in the gracious work He has already begun. We become co-creators, shaping His world for good. God works in us. We become participants in His work of grace within our own hearts. Our giving helps transform us, even as we bless others. And as we align our treasure with what He treasures, we reveal the work He is doing in our hearts to make us more like Jesus. What happens when we give? more than we could ever imagine. Give generously and discover what God can do because of you. That is now our closing prayer today. Father, as we end this program, we want to give honor to you Thank you, Lord, for all the marvelous things that you have done today. Thank you for your love that you have revealed to us and for the love that we share together as your body. May you bless each person who took time to gather here today and let your hand of protection be on them throughout the rest of the week. Let the work done here come to fruition and let it all for your glory. Bless each of us and keep us safe until we are able to gather together again. We pray for all the words that you have sown into our hearts this day. Watch over them, protect them. May they take root and produce wonderful things of beauty and great blessing to many. As we leave this place now, thank you that you walk with us that you may be alert to your promptings and live in your endless love. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory in this age and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Okay, so thank you, and uh, okay, I'll send you, okay, so if you need coffee, meron kong kape, pwede kayo mag-order dyan. Sa Facebook, pwede kayo mag-order. Libre ba yan, Pas? Ayan. Kape, pampapayat. Lumit na chanko niyan. <laughs> okay. Thank you and God bless you po. See you next Sunday.
Thank you po. Pastor. Thank you po, Pastor. Okay. Welcome. God bless. Thank you po, Pastor. Yes. Welcome. God bless po. Bye. God bless. God bless.